Hello, my name is Scott Fisk, and welcome to this tutorial on Basic Dreamweaver. And this is this is going to be a short and sweet and very simple uh, tutorial, just to kind of get your your feet wet in uh, in Dreamweaver. So let's get started. I'm going to go to File New, and we have different uh, options in here. We're just going to go with HTML and none. And HTML stands for Hypertext Markup Language. We're defaulted to HTML5, which is the newest version of version of HTML. Every few years they come out with uh, new tags that make things happen. So for example, back uh, when I first started using Dreamweaver, they didn't have backgrounds or background colors, and they added those HTML tags and updated the HTML, and they're doing that uh, every couple years to make it more powerful. So I'm going to say create. Everything on this side of the screen is code view. Uh, and then everything on this side of the screen is WYSIWYG, which stands for what you see is what you get. And it's a little bit of a, a fib in Dreamweaver because you don't really always get exactly what you see. But sometimes, usually it's pretty close. Uh, we have code view, which just puts it purely in code, code view, split view, and design view. I almost always keep it in split view. I am a designer who likes to code. I am not a coder who likes to design. Um, so split view works well for me. We have the title, which is the title that goes at the very, very, very top of the web page uh, right here. So let's get started. Let's just make a fictitious sort of uh, personal homepage, Scott Fisk's web page or website, if you will. And I'm going to include a couple of links. So let's just uh, let's just say, for example, we're going to include a link to Google. And we're going to do a link to, let's say, MS, let's say Bing, which is another popular search engine. So up here at the top, we can highlight that. We have the properties window down here. If you ever need to open the properties window, it's located right here. This properties window allows us to do different things, such as bold, italicize the type. So we could italicize and bold the title. I'll just leave it on bold for now. Now let's go ahead and add a link. I'm going to highlight the link. We're going down here to this, this bottom portion of the page, and right here it says link. Very important, link. And we have a couple ways of doing this. We can either just type the link in, or we can actually go click on this button and go find a web page to link to, if we already had web pages to link to. Do not forget this. This is very important. You always need to put HTTP colon forward slash forward slash in front of your link names when you're linking to different things. So it's now linking to Google. Uh, let's go ahead and do the same thing with Bing. Bing.com. So now we have two links. Uh, I will show you in a second how to change the link color. But first, let's go ahead and test this uh, this web page out. Right before I test it, I'm going to put a title uh, put a title in for the web page, which you should always get in the habit of doing. It's just a good thing for SEO compliance. SEO stands for Search Engine Optimization. So let's test this thing out. My preferred web browser is Google Chrome or Firefox. I'm going to hit save. It's just saving the web page here. And here is my file. This is the best way to really test and preview what you're working on. That's something I do quite a bit when I'm in Dreamweaver. So sometimes these two things look pretty close. This is, this is my browser, and this is the WYSIWYG area. Sometimes they look pretty close, but they don't always look really close. Sometimes they look quite a bit different. Um, next thing I'm going to do is show you how to change things like the link color. So let's go up to Modify Page Properties, and we have a lot of options to talk about in here. We could change the page font, which is this, just the default page font. Uh, why do we only have these fonts in here? Well, these are the, the fonts that are included on almost all major computers and uh, mobile devices out there. So these are considered web-safe fonts. Why are they listed in order? Why are they putting Gotham in front of Helvetica? I guess they believe that Gotham is a better font than Helvetica because that means that if the computer has Gotham, it will show Gotham. If it doesn't have Gotham, it skips over to Helvetica. And then it skips to, Ar skips to Arial, etc. So this is just a loading order for fonts in essence. We'll go ahead and try that one. Uh, we can pick our standard font size, font color. Uh, we'll try out 
kind of a, a reddish tint here. And if I click apply, you'll see it actually changes up at the top of the page. We can change our background color. Usually subtle background colors are best. Change that uh, background color. We could put in a background image by default. If I do select a background image, it's going to repeat it over and over and over again unless you tell it not to. And this is where you can do that. By default, it repeats. Or you could say no repeat. This is uh, like vertical and uh, horizontal for those uh, X and Y. We can set up the margins, which I rarely do. I usually do that sort of manually when I'm working within Dreamweaver itself instead of, instead of this area. So kind of moving on, going to the links area, I'm going to skip over appearance for now because that's it's controlling that stuff through HTML. I'm going straight to links. Uh, I could change my link color. Let's go with let's go with a teal sort of color for this. And I could uh, copy and paste that color into the visited link and the and the active link. And usually I do make the rollover link something subtly different just so you can tell that something's actually happening. Now I'm going to say apply. Ooh, that's horribly hard to read. So let's go with something that's a little easier, easier to read. Something more contrasty like this, this color. And this is hex. These numbers represent different colors. There's uh, lots and lots of different options for this. So that one's a little bit easier to read. But let's change the rollover link. This is always a fun thing to do. Click activate. And now when I exit out of this, when I roll over this, uh, if I test it, of course, you have to test it to see this work. I can roll over this and it changes color ever so slightly. So why is one more of a purple and one's that greenish tint? Well, let's let's go see. Going back to modified page properties, going to links. My visited link color defaults to purple. That means I've already visited that link before. Um, web usability experts say that it's good to keep these colors slightly different so people know if they have or have not been to a web page. So default is blue uh, for the link color, and then the visited link color default is purple. Rollover, of course, is just when you roll over it. So, oh, this is fun, I love this. You can turn off the underline, which is kind of a handy thing, uh, and you have some other uh, underline and options within, within that. So that's all I'm gonna talk about for now in regards to uh, basic Basic page properties, I'm going to hit OK. Here's my web page. Kind of moving on to bigger and, and better things. In the properties box down here, we have a button that's called CSS. I can click on CSS. This is going to give me the capability to sort of override those, uh, those fonts. If I want to change a font for just one thing on the page, I could highlight it. And then I could go click on a different font, and it will change the font. Uh, notice it changed the fonts for everything uh, at, at this point. I can undo and I highlight this one word again. Actually, I'm going to just uh, hit return, hit enter on that, highlight this word or this uh, these few words, and we're going to try Baskerville. So it's just switching out all the, the fonts right now for the targeted rule, which is body, which is everything. So it's switching out everything at this, this point in time. If I wanted it to just switch out the font for one thing, I would have to do that in the style sheets area. And uh, again, you can also access the page property area down here. This is, this is kind of interesting. If I wanted to center the text, uh, center all of this text, this is how I do it. I could click center, right align, left align, etc. Just like that. I could change the, uh, the font size. I could say edit the rule, and this allows me to go into a different uh, preview area that allows me to edit the, the CSS, the controls for the font and the font size. I can go to CSS Designer, and this is where things get a little bit more complex. I'm going to hold off and not talk about this right now. It gives you the capability to add more styles, so I could restyle you know, one font different from another font. Okay, that's all I have for now. Thank you.